Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's a little cool. bumpy. We're my live. fault. Yeah, that's Very, right. I didn't hear the music end. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. It's a uh, cold start. Definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> rusty you know. on my end there. Definitely. I don't know if everybody on uh, watching knows what happened. All of a sudden, we're looking at our screens, and Rich and I are like, "I think we're on." <laughs> yeah. I don't hear anything. And the the funny part was, Andy said, "Hey, you're going to start this week, aren't you?" Meaning me. <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> so yeah, give it a start. start. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome, everyone. No, all the Let's transitions talk. were not smooth, and that was me. That was me out of practice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many weeks has it been? We've had. Uh, it's been a, it's been a little a, too long. That's what it has month. been. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but it's good to be back. Good to be back. Good to have uh, some old friends in the chat. I see Chops is here. I see Kevin Griff is here. Awesome. And I'm sure. Hopefully, we'll have a few more joining us along the way. We've got uh, uh, some great conversation. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat as we go through and talk about uh, uh, what will eventually what topic we'll get to is pair of programming. But uh, before we get there, Swami, Chris, how are you guys doing? Pretty good. It is I'm summer. doing well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, Chris. It is summer break here, uh, at yeah. least for my daughter. No, it is not. It isn't? And... Uh, not yet. One more day for us. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It is for my daughter, but not um, uh, wife's school district another couple days. So that's a big I mean, that's a big deal, right? We've had some nice weather, um, maybe a maybe a more typical summer this time around is what we're hoping for. That'll be cool uh, to do some more things. Um, I don't know what they are, though. <laughs> It's funny <laughs> because, you know, I, I think I think I've uh, we've made an effort not to plan super far ahead. And now. Nope. I think we lost your audio, dude. Yeah. yeah. So Go we're, ahead. we're planning a vacation. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but we said, you know, let's do it. Let's let's plan a vacation. Yeah. Started planning it a little while ago. It's it's like weird to even think about going on a vacation, you know, like. Yeah. But, but we need yep. to, like, you know, the summer's coming, uh, my kids will be going off to camp and I think things are getting back to normal, uh, mm -hmm. going to the office a couple of days a week and different things like that. And I feel like, you know, listen, I, I want to also be careful here because we have a, a, you know, I don't know if, if who's, who's watching right now, but international audience, right. And in the U S things are doing pretty well, yeah, but maybe not as, everywhere for not sure. As, yeah, maybe not everywhere. Maybe not where you are, whoever's watching. And we and we hope for the best for you. Uh, but things are opening up here in the U.S. And, um, and and quite frankly, I'm excited about that. You know, like it's weird. Do you guys have that weird thing like where you still don't think you're supposed to go places, right? Yeah, uneasiness about oh, absolutely about doing things. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean even even the uneasiness of while being out and among people and remembering not that long ago, we were doing that, but we had masks on at the time, but being out having dinner, we had the gym this week, you know, and, and still, you know, all of that is very different. Um, you know, and it feels, it still feels a little strange. But you know, the, I haven't been to a restaurant yet. That's the same here, but I, it's, I feel like it's we're getting a great close. time. What's that Chris? I feel like we're getting close. My daughter, um, uh, she just she just misses the age for for what's approved in the United States for uh, vaccines. So um, she's she's cognizant of that and she she can't wait. But she says like, yeah, <laughs> she's still wary, which I understand. You know what? She's been a trooper for over a year and a half. So mm -hmm. uh, I certainly respect that that she um, can't wait to uh, to join. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, been at the dinner a couple of times. We were going to plan some. Uh, we got some vacation time planned up. Uh, I think Andy, you and I talked about uh, kind of. Well, I know we're heading there in July uh, to go and, oh, and right. star watch and stargaze and yeah, Cherry Springs is that what it's called, right? No, yeah, Cherry, Cherry Springs. Springs yeah. yeah, the the most. I'm looking forward light. to going out there. Yeah, uh, if I, you're. I still didn't buy a telescope. Did you buy a telescope? Same. Anybody in chat, if you have a good telescope, I'm curious to know what you have. I mean, I'm looking at getting, I think they're called like obsidian or something like that. I, I don't know the terminology really well, but 
I'm trying to decide if I want one of these ones with the with the technology built into it. Uh, or do I just use my app on my phone and sort of, you know, still point it around? Because that's not too hard either. But yeah. I'd um, love to find something entry level. Yeah. I'd like to get on a show and talk about that kind of stuff with people, like people that know, like not our show, but like right. let's you, me and you find a live stream where they're talking about, you know, entry level telescopes for people. Because I'll bet there is one out there. Um, no doubt. And uh, that would be fun. Uh, I like that stuff, you know. So, you know what I think we should will... mention is mm -hmm. what's going to take place October 19th through the 22nd, a getaway, a getaway for everyone. Right. Right. Isn't that right? Like a vacation, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Perfect segue. Vacation, if you will. Um, and, and Kev's Kevin's on the chat. Oh, his birthday. Wait, what is this? Oh, wait, I don't know. Is that when your is that when Kevin's birthday is? I, maybe I'm not synced up with the chat, but Kevin's asking me oh, just yeah. to approve his, uh, his session submissions for Tech Bash. We haven't approved any yet, just to be clear. So, so we haven't picked any speakers yet. But yeah, 19th to 22nd, all signs are pointing really good for Tech Bash. We were a little nervous about, just like we were talking about already, right, with the going out to dinner or whatever it might be that people feel nervous about it. I think everyone feels that like, hey, by the time October comes around, this is good. Companies are, are saying yes. Sponsors are saying yes. Speakers are saying yes. And um, and I think that's that's pretty good. And yeah, so we will be celebrating Kevin Griffin's uh, birthday, which will be exciting. And, uh, and I, by the way, I do see that Chops uh, looks like says he's got an old telescope and, you know, maybe it's 40 years old. And guess what? I think uh, I think that they work. That's one cool thing about that. Tech. That's tech that doesn't get out of date, I guess. Right. Unless yeah, there's right? A computer built it doesn't into it doesn't need you know, a whole a lot of uh, firmware updates to yet. Right. Wait right. for it. I, I've seen a lot of videos that I've watched where people just still, you know, like the telescope you had is the telescope you need. You know, it works great. You just keep using it, you know. Um, yeah. So Tech Bash is going to be great. We've got a lot of submissions. Uh, we're in the planning stages for various parts of it. Uh, nothing really that I can totally announce too much, but it's going to be I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be more fun because I think for many people, it will be our first conference back. And I think that there will be this inherent like funness to that. You know what I mean? That like excitement, like we're going to be like, wow, we're out, we're, we're doing this. And so I think that's going to make it a great event. Um, I think Chris, you're not available that week. Is, am I right about that? Um, as of right now, I do not, I'm not scheduled to go, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not well, not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so Tech Bash. What else do we have going on? Any other uh, events that we want to talk about? You know, tomorrow there's one. Mahesh has an uh, – no, sorry, Friday I think it is, right? Or was it uh, – it was last Friday. I hope I didn't miss it. I'll check. I'll let you guys talk about something and I'll check this thing here. Well, you know, so let me ask because maybe this isn't a conversation – how many folks saw what was talked about for Xbox and E3? Anybody? Not not this group? I'll be wrong honest, group? I no. did not. No. Okay. It's not the wrong group. I just, it's been. It was a big weekend. A weeks. It was a big weekend yeah. for uh, my, my daughter and I. She couldn't wait to watch the Xbox show and see them talk about all the games coming up. Um, Halo Infinite launching later this year. Forza Horizon 5 set in Mexico City launching in uh, October? Soon. Soon. And it looks amazing. Um, Flight Simulator hitting the console next month. Stuff. And there's a lot more going on too. But she was, it's, she's gotten to the age now where she is ready to be taken in by the hype machine and watch the watch you know the the keynote and look forward to the games and and what what she'll learn over time is is that okay so we're talking about games that might be out this year but some of them won't be out till next year and maybe even after that so you know <laughs> it's it's a long ways away but um but yeah that's that's in the past um what else what else was there something coming up that I forgot about? Well, I did check. Yeah. Uh, so Friday, June 18th, 
which hasn't come up yet. I, I was just double checking my dates because I'm bad with that. You know, C Sharp Corner and our friend Mahesh over there and uh, and David McCarter, who does a lot of stuff with him. Uh, they are running a uh, code quality and performance virtual conference. Um, and I'm trying to see if I have a good link to getting more information. Is this clickable? Yeah, I can post something. Here we go. I'll post this in the chat. So, you know, this is another one of those great, like, you know, virtual events. That you can get, um, you can get uh, a lot of knowledge at this thing. And they're going to be specifically talking about code quality. And I think that there's a you know a lot of a lot of people in our 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 viewers our listeners that's a topic of interest to us code quality right we we talk about that on the show and I think um, I think it's a big good event he's got some good speakers lined up and um, I think it's going to be cool so uh, he's got uh, Bob Kemper David McCarter Jason Bach Lewis Matos Mahesh of course will be speaking I can't see all the speakers from this thing. Uh, oh yeah, you got my. Oh, is it your screen or my screen? For me, I think you're sharing my screen because I'm on the same. <laughs> I, you're right. I, scrolling up didn't didn't. Uh, like oh, yeah, it's kind of weird. I thought maybe I I'd know. find them. But Strange website. There might be some other place <laughs> to find them. So, but you know, anyway, that wasn't it. Uh, we're just we're just sharing the uh, sharing the knowledge. I like Kevin Griffin, who uh, has a nice comment there in the chat. Kevin says, and we can quote him on this, I prefer code quantity over quality. Nice. Very nice. Um, obviously, he's kidding about that. Uh, although, he's a consultant. You know, Kevin gets get paid, paid by online. lines of code, right? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> anything is possible with Kevin. Kevin's a good friend of the show. He's been a guest of ours twice, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, we got to have him back on the show again soon. I think that'd be fun, wouldn't it? So what did we come here to talk about? Or at least, uh, well, is that what we're, we're doing? doing? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we were going to talk about, hey, oh, so let me start out with a question, right? I was saying the topic for tonight was going to be paired programming. It's what I've been calling it for a long time. And when I Google it, when I look it up, it turns out it's pair Pro, or at least normally written as pair programming without the ED. Uh, okay. I think both are appropriate, of course, but I think officially it's called pair programming. And I put a couple tweets out about this topic. And, you know, we had a quick internal discussion, the three of us, about what, you know, sort of what do we think? And I thought, you know, this is a topic that. There's opinions on this. Like, this is not one of those things where I think everyone said, you know, so, some topics everybody's like, oh, you got to do that. And I think this is one of those topics where there's a, 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 a variety of opinions on, you know, should we do it? How often we should do it? Does it help? Um, I'm in I'm on the I'm in favor camp. I'll come right out and, and say that. But I'd love to hear from people in the in chat. Uh, of what they think of the concept. And then, we, you know, maybe we can talk about that. Maybe we can sway some people. Maybe by the end of this show, I'll be convinced not to do pair programming, right? Because maybe some people will have some really good reasons why it's a, why it's a bad idea. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, let's step back and define it real quick, right? So let's let's go to the source because you always just read the first line of Wikipedia when you want a definition. But I actually think this isn't bad. We can maybe settle on it, right? Pair programming, okay. and, and again, we can we can mess with this. It's not a big deal. But pair programming is an agile software development technique in which two programmers work together at one workstation. That's pretty good. They go on to say one, yeah. the driver writes code, while the other, the observer or navigator. I had no idea that there were roles. That's pretty cool. Uh, reviews yeah, I got each, that in my notes, yeah. Yeah, reviews each line of code as it is typed in. Then another interesting point, the two programmers switch roles frequently. So, um not interested in boxing us into that specific definition, but I think it captures it. Yeah. Right. It captures the gist of it. Right. I think it's, um, first of all, and, and you know, I think there's a lot of topics we can talk about. I don't believe it has to be two people. As a matter of fact, I've done it effectively in groups of, uh, I can think of times when I've had five people doing quote pair programming. Right. And so I, th I take some issue with that, definition, although I guess if you're going to use the word pair, that does sound like two. 
So, um, you know, maybe this is mob programming, right? Uh, yeah. And there's, there's a lot of ways to look at this. Of course, the definition even says two people working at the same computer. And of course, we don't have to do that, right? So, but, but I think that definition gives you the gist of what we're talking about here, right? For anyone that's, mm-hmm. it's about people programming together. Right. Um, and it, I also think there's a, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Please. I was going to say, and if, and if that, if the whole concept, it's like, see, we've heard the term quite a bit, but I, I do acknowledge that somebody maybe either watching live or watching in the future, re- the recording on YouTube might say, Hey, that's a new concept to me. I, that you know, you learn how to you learn how to code, you learn how to be a developer. Why can't you just do the work yourself? I, I want to acknowledge that, like, we look at it; it's a given term. You know, how long have we been hearing and talking about it? So there might be folks, and maybe they're new; they're thinking of switching into the discipline, um, or or they're, they're they're beginning to learn to code, or they just haven't heard of it before. And so here we are talking about like, ah, oh, you know, you know, it's no big deal. But but that might be the first thing that I was thinking of is is you had said it's something you enjoy you think this effective, and I would say that an interested person might say like well wait but you learned how to to code why does it take two of you to turn the wrench so to speak? Yeah, that's that's a that's the perfect question to start with right like why do we need two people right? And there's a lot of reasons for that and I think we can we can talk about a bunch of them we can each throw out different benefits if, if you have some that you can think of. So the first one right off the bat that I would start with, <laughs> Kevin Griffin says, two developers are only half as dumb as a single developer. And that really kind of sums up the the same, the first reason I was going to give, right? Which is, you could say that that is, it is true, right? I mean, you could replace dumb with smart, but um you know, you could say two, two, two developers are twice as smart as a single developer, right? Which is, you know, I think Kevin put it pretty well. I, I like his, mm-hmm. his way of spelling this out. But two minds, right, are great, right? And you get, um, you get a different perspective on things, right? And you get, um, you know, we know there's a lot of ways to do things, right? There's, there's often a lot of right ways. There's often a bunch of wrong ways to do things. But... Just because I'm writing code one way doesn't mean there's maybe not a, a different way to do it, a different, a better way to try, right? And so, so you get two people's, two minds coming together on the best way to do something. Uh, and maybe you get some, you know, ideas and, and things that come from that. And to me, that's like the root uh, reason right there. Now, there's a whole bunch of other reasons why I think it's good. But that, I think, is the core Go to reason, two people, you know, or, or, or more. Or, um, and, uh, you know, I've, I also think, uh, you know, let's, before we go on to other reasons, let's just touch upon something that is not the same as pair programming. Okay. But there is another thing that I enjoy, which is pair design, right? Or mob design, right? Multiple people design it, right? And those are not the same thing, right? A lot of times people say, oh, yeah, we do pair programming. A lot of times we'll, you know, we'll, We'll get together and we'll sort of like talk about how we're going to build the application and things like that. And that's a valuable uh, yeah. effort, a valuable initiative, one that I enjoy and, and you guys probably do as well. But it's not the same as pair programming. Pair programming is actually writing yep. code, right? Right. Um, totally agree. Editors open. Yeah. And you are literally typing new method and you're saying to yeah. each other, OK, so the first thing we got to do is we've uh, we've got to create an HTTP client because we're going to make a an HTTP call and you'll go and you'll yeah that's right and and you just might start typing you know HTTP client client equals new and and you're literally putting this stuff out and the other person is just watching I shouldn't say just that's not what I meant the other person is yeah. watching yeah. they're also helping guide they might even stop you mid midway although I don't think the point is to backseat too much but to say like wait wait hold on a second. Remember, there's two parameters for that method or something like that. Or, hey, let's go look up that method. I think there's an overload we might like here. And just, I don't know, little things to sort of get it right the first time. Yeah, I think that um, I don't think it starts personally with someone typing that line, uh, HTTP client, you know, new HTTP, whatever, however whatever, you describe right. it. I think something. it usually starts with me. 
whoever the so you have like you have the sort of the driver and the navigator right the yeah. drivers got the hands on the keyboard the navigators doesn't <laughs> right yeah, so sure. uh, I think it's really important that it's really tempting for the driver to get sort of carried away and just start doing stuff right so I'm pretty purposeful in pair programming to say hey Chris uh, rich you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna instantiate a new HTTP client. Yeah. You guys cool, right? And maybe start typing when I do that. But in other words, I'm bringing you right into that conversation. Yep. This isn't right. me driving, driving, right? This is us working together. And you may go, hey, Andy, you know, why aren't you injecting that in, right? So yeah, yeah. maybe I was wrong right off the bat, right? right? Um, so, you know, I think it's really important. Uh, one of the one of the gotchas in here is the driver getting carried away, right? So. There's a real uh, art to um, sort of get, getting it right, getting that vibe right, getting the uh, the tone, the mood of this session, right? Because some people don't don't do paired programming. They don't like paired programming for a variety of reasons, right? And you know, getting into the negative side of things, you know, there's there's point and counterpoint here, but it's not so easy to do paired programming or pair programming. Let's just be clear about this. It's uncomfortable on the first time you're doing it and you can screw it up if you don't sort of set the tone right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sort of combating the the cons to, to this thing, but also sort of starting off with a tip of like what not to do. Don't just take over, you know, like, like yeah. I've taken over this conversation right now. You know? <laughs> well, well, I think yeah. it comes, yeah, go I mean, ahead, it Rick. feels like there's a little bit of, of ego that has to be put in check. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, uh, you know, every line of code is like, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, you know, don't call our baby ugly. Right. It's it's, you know, you, so you've got to almost put that in check and be able to take feedback, you know, uh, constructive criticism. And from the person who's the pair and I, I forget the term you you called it, Chris. Navigator or driver. It, navigator driver right um that person also has to have an ego in check too right because you know if you're sitting in the back seat you almost want like you said you don't want to be hammering on every line of code they're doing either right you've got to chime in at the right part so i think for certain people i think you might wind up doing that better with other than than with other people because you have a working relationship already you already know each other you have some kind of interplay you know i think that all of those things kind of go into that that bit having done this a couple of times throughout the course of my career there were some occasions where yeah we did sit in pair programming and usually it was around something that was all right this is kind of new we're running into an issue let's just get a couple of smart brains around the keyboards and the, and the desk and figure it out you know i almost think that what you're at, at the last thing you said there is almost like a different category as well. We talked about mm -hmm. pair design and pair programming, pair troubleshooting is it is pair programming, right? You're on the keyboard, yeah. you're doing things, but you're coming from a different perspective, right? Which is often one person saying, I need some help. Can you, can you come help me with this? Sure. Pair yeah. Programming isn't necessarily one person needing help. Mm -hmm. They may actually think that they've got this well under control and you're starting from scratch, yep. right? Um, mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, uh, paired troubleshooting or yep. whatever we want to call that is a great exercise and also a good gateway into pair programming because I think it's a different, it, sometimes it's more of a necessity, like you need help and then you go, hey, you know, Chris helped me out that time for like an hour with that, that wasn't so bad, maybe, we could take this, maybe we, Chris and I could take our relationship to the next level, right? And maybe we can move on to pair programming, right? So I think I like know, it's what a little you said. perspective. Yeah. I like what you said about it being a, a gateway because I do think a lot of groups, teams, maybe you folks, if you're watching now, that might be how it starts is at first it's that whole second set of eyes. Like this isn't working. Can somebody just look over my shoulder or heck, it could even be more primitive than that. It can be, this isn't working. And a, a good mentor like Andy says, I'm going to sit down with you and we'll figure it out. Or he picks somebody else on the team. Can you sit down with Chris and help figure that out? Like that's the, that's the most primitive form. But then the paired troubleshooting is 
yeah, I've been working on this, but if I can get somebody to help me knock it out and, and what, what, what I think you're trying to lay down a little stake is when you commit to paired programming, it is the first shovel full. Like you have the empty field yeah. and you are, you are file new project. I mean, not that many of us get to do that, but yeah, right. whatever it is you're going to work on, that is, that is from step one. It is not, let me go start on this for about 10, 15 minutes, two days, and then I'll bring you in. You're, all of these things are valid, by the way. I don't want to try and, and say that, that you stink if you don't do it. From, but what, what you're laying down as pair programming is you start at the beginning. You are pairing up to do this work, and it's going to be from from step from step one of the work. Well, yeah, I mean, let's be careful with that because th- that might have more implications than I'm comfortable with for pair programming, right? So one of the down one of the negatives against pair programming, one of the complaints people say about it, is. Um, you know, it really, it drags on. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing, you know, it drags on. I mean, it really takes a long time. I mean, I can't believe we spent like a whole day pair programming. And I'd say, wait, what do you mean you spent a whole day? Well, I thought we're committed to working on this together. And I would say, no, 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 no. That's maybe not the most healthy way to pair program. I would say, hey, Chris, we might start out on zero code. And you and I spend an hour working together. Maybe we stub out some methods. You know, who knows what we do? Maybe we write actual code. Maybe we stub things out. And then maybe we split up for a while and maybe we fill in some more code. Right. And maybe I work for another day even right now. Again, this is my, there's no rule. Okay. I agree with you. I was curious Um, if we were kind of taking the, which I think this is correct. It's been a while since I've read the book, but Kent Beck's extreme programming where that's part of it. Like they committed to pairing in, in his. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, I think. Yeah. And I would suggest, let's put it this way. If you like that idea of extreme programming and, and pairing up, you know, for the idea, if you've never done that, then a softer way to start is like, let's try this for an hour. Let's see how that goes. Right. Because it's kind of like the difference between unit, unit testing and TDD, test driven design. Right. Like it's a lot to bite off to dive first to dive you know, into like code test first. Right. And you could I think you could make the same argument for pair programming. Do you want to do this in small doses? before you dive right in and, um, and uh, you know, commit to like days of sitting together. I personally don't like doing that. I think that, um, I think at a certain point you start to run at, like, I think some of the benefits of pair programming start to thin out, like as the session goes longer, I think. Mm-hmm. There's always things, you know, that, that we can gain from pair programming, but I think it does start to thin out. You also get to that part of the programming well, you guys probably have this, right? You're stubbing things out, you're building some methods. And then at a certain point, you get into the repetitive part where maybe you're copying all these, you know, one object into another and you're writing a lot of lines of code that are like sort of similar, right? And you're like, so what I often do with pair programming is like, write, let's say I'm writing, you know, something that converts, you know, like foo into bar and you go like bar dot name equals foo dot name. And, you know, like those kind of lines, right? You write out one or two of them and then maybe I leave like a placeholder and say, I'll come back and do this without you, uh, Rich, because you you see what I'm writing here. It's just going to be more of the same. And mm-hmm. that's where I think it gets a little monotonous and gets a little boring. That, that's like my tip again. Like you don't have to do it that way, but okay. that's a way I, I would kind of do it. OK, well, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I wanted to see if if you were staking out because I think it's it's fair to say that if you said it is there's a spectrum to how people might tackle this might start off with help me out a little bit. And then it could be as a team, you make the commitment to work together on tough issues or to, like you said, is what if a couple people kind of laid out a shell? If I, you'll let me use that term a little bit of implementation, but stub some things out, come back. What if you uh, planned out the unit tests? Cause that might be kind of nice to say, Hey, we're going to need a test that proves this. I'm not saying write it. I mean, you could, but even just maybe laying it down with a comment, like test that shows A turns into B. We need that one. Yeah. Or maybe even split up. Uh, like maybe you stub out a bunch of things and maybe both people go along and say, I'm going to write a bunch of unit tests for a while. Let's come back and, and maybe compare and see like maybe the way you wrote that, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this kind of stuff. Right. Um, 
But, and there's no right way, and there's not necessarily a wrong way. I mean, the wrong way is the way that doesn't work for you. You know, whoever, you know, whoever you are, right? Whoever the listener or watcher, whatever doesn't work for you, that's the wrong way. Um, but if you're unsuccessful, I would say maybe think about some of these tips because maybe the way, you know, you didn't work and you're unhappy with the result. We we have found, we, we're making a push in my organization for more pair programming. And the response, I would say, more than I would even say the result, right? The result can be hard to measure, right? Did the code, was the code better because we did pair programming or not? It's kind of hard to measure, you know, like we don't look at like, well, let's check the bugs on the pair code versus the non-pair, you know, it's hard to quantify that. But but the response has been really overwhelmingly positive to the experience. And that tells me that the result is good because the result isn't only that I'm hoping to have better code, but I'm hoping to have a learning experience for the developers that are participating, right? And this is another part of the benefit, right? We can kind of circle back and forth between like tips and benefits and pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. But in addition to having better code is the developers are learning from each other. You know, the developers are picking up tips and those tips come in a wide variety of uh, formats, if you will, right? Let me give you an example that seems completely um, irrelevant at the time and no one's really thinking about this because we're thinking about the code, the code we write. But most times when I pair up with someone that I haven't paired up with for a while or a new person, Will be And, you know, this, again, was pre-COVID. We'd often be sitting together, and they would write some code, and they'd do some little with their fingers, and something magical would happen on the screen. And I'd say, well, what was that? I said, did you just, I don't know, you know, copy and replace six lines of code with question marks? You know, I don't know what it is. So, some macro-type thing that they knew. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how did you do that? And they're like, oh, yeah, control Q minus H is the shortcut for something and i go like wait is that new and they go no i've been doing it for like yeah. four years and i'm like how did i not know that was out there right so not even just learning about code right i just learned a, a tooling tip right there are so many aspects of visual studio vs code whatever it is we do that there are so many things that we can learn along the way. And so it is not just about code, but it's about that whole experience, right? Or maybe even seeing a way that, you know, hey, Rich, that was interesting the way you did that. I don't usually stub things out the same way. I kind of like that technique you used where you kind of wrote and you put a couple placeholders. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm making it up, but you kind of put a couple placeholders in there. And that seemed pretty effective. I don't usually do that, right? And I just learned like, a again, it's not code, but it's a technique for writing code or a process for writing code. Yeah, and I think all of that is, I think helps build the team as well, right? You're, you're, you're spending more time together as much as, you know, developers, I think we'd like to be a little bit more introverted and just get in our headphones and write code. Um, there's those opportunities where, you know, we're much better together as a team than we are uh, on our own. And I think that helps build those bonds and helps build those, uh, those things that, uh, um, I don't know, those tips and tricks that you mentioned are the things that I always, you know, dig into It's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. How do we do that? And I was sharing some of that today with, 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 uh, customers we were working with, you know, highlight a bunch of lines of code and do control K control C to comment it all out. Right. You know, that, that saved them yeah, right. a bunch of work. So, Yeah, and there are things that we take for granted. Like, you probably didn't do it with the intention of teaching that to them. You were just doing it, probably, mm -hmm. because it's part of your, you know, it's just way of doing memory. things. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, it takes that little aha moment where someone goes, wait, what? And, you know, and, and you realize that there's, like, a whole different value add from pair programming, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, like Pace Jason is class, right? That it never gets old. I use that. I actually used that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I, it's funny that you mentioned that because I had to remember it. Like I didn't know any shortcut for it, but I'm like, I know there's a way to do this. <laughs> so, and it's. Yeah. I think one of the things we've focused on so far was how 
working together. Um, I think some of the things we said is like, uh, like you said, learning from each other. Uh, talked maybe just a briefly a little bit about getting it right. I don't even want, I'm, I'm avoiding saying the first, getting it right the first time. I'm avoiding that. And the reason why, but I do want to bring up something we've talked about. I think we've talked about Fred Brooks, the author of Mythical Man Month on this show. He's one of my favorite authors. Mythical Man Month is one of my favorite essays in computer science. And he has a quote where he talked about pair programming. Um, he says, a fellow graduate student, this is his quote, I'll just read it. Fellow graduate student Bill Wright and I first tried pair programming when I was a grad student in 19, uh, it says here 1953 to 1956. I'm not sure if that was part of the quote. We produced 1500 lines of defect free code. It ran correctly first try. So I find that interesting that he recognized some value in having that second set of eyes, right? Um, or that the two of them got what he perceived as the correct program right away. And I think the the little pivot I kind of want to take on that is that I, I think you sort of you 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 said it earlier, Andy. If you're if you're new to programming, or even if you're not so new to programming. Even though you would think that our tooling is pretty standardized, we talked about having the same IDE, maybe we're using the same operating system, even the same programming language. We're even deploying to the same server. And yet, couldn't we write the same program how many different ways? Is it almost like composing music where it could be five ways, 10 ways, 12 ways to reasonably get the job done? It's not like if I was saying to you, hey, I need this electronic device to take power from the wall. Well, in the United States, that plug is standard. I mean, at least here. And if, if, if I say, hey, I need this little device to pump some video out to that TV. Well, I've got a couple output formats I can try, HDMI, cable, whatever that is. But we're building like this air castle. And, and this is an opportunity that for you and I sitting together to at least come up with these intellectual connectors together at the same time so we have a better chance that they'll fit instead of like well I carved out a jigsaw puzzle piece and you carved out one and they're actually both really good pieces but wow they don't really fit together even though they're both great implementations and that's like something unique about our discipline I think I, I shouldn't say unique plenty of disciplines like that but it's something that's a factor in our discipline is the three of us could be working together on the same project. And if we don't maybe spend a little time pairing, a little time looking over each other's shoulders, working together, we're all going to come to the table and it's like, oh, hold on. I got to go write a little code so that our code glues together, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, I, yeah, there's definitely a, an aspect there, right? Um and uh, and you also get a little idea for the pain, possibly, let's just say the pain that that uh, your, your counter, let's say you're working on two parts of that thing, right? And you get an idea of the pain of walking in your counterpart's shoes for a bit and you go, oh, yeah, the stuff they're working on, that is complicated. I see some of that. I see why, uh, you know, things are hard to line up, but but working together, you know, we, we can help each other with that. Um, I think that's good. You know. Another thing, you, you mentioned something about, um, you said, well, maybe you're new to programming or maybe you're not new to programming, right? Uh, something like that you were saying. And I thought, you know, there's another there's another aspect of pair programming that I wanted to bring, bring to light, which is that there are different uh, sort of combinations of people that could pair up, right? You could have um, two experienced developers pairing up, right? And that's often what you see. If oh, there's more uh, established developers, they've been doing this a while, and they maybe embrace something like pair programming. Um, I think that's a more common scenario. A lot of times you get these scenarios where sometimes people, they sort of don't think they should pair up with the other person. They say, well, that person's way more senior than me or way more junior than me. And we really, that would not be a good combination for pairing up because we're going to move at different paces or, or something, you know, whatever. And, you know, I, I think just the opposite is the case. Um, it's great for, you know, two juniors to pair up. It's great for two seniors to pair up. And it's great for a junior and a senior to pair up. I think you'd be surprised at what you get from those scenarios. 
I'm telling you, the senior developer will learn things from the junior developer. If nothing else, perspective. They will learn to see things from a different way, right? And maybe that will help them write the code better. Maybe it will help them write the code in a more readable way, thinking like, okay, this other person's going to have to maintain my code, you know, and they get that perspective along the way. Um, or they get a good understanding of, of that other, their counterparts, um, you know, abilities, uh, because they may ask that counterpart to help out with certain things. And so, you, you know, you learn about each other. I mean, there's just so many, so many aspects of it. Um, but I wanted to, I kind of, when you said, you know, sort of beginner, I, I, this is not for just for beginners, or this is not just for established experienced developers, right? This is for all across the board. Yeah, I just want to make sure we consider that somebody watching this might say, we don't do that at work. I'm a student and I've never done anything like that. Maybe it's because you, your environment, I hate to say it, but in an academic environment might be a little more competitive. That does happen. That does happen. Uh, sometimes you're graded relative to each other, That, uh, which I would probably argue to a professor is, is don't do that. Like that, How, how do you expect to collab learn collaboration? Um, mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, if you're new to what we're talking about and you're still kind of puzzled, then I would say, hey, here, here's why, here are some of the things we think it solves for. You know, getting two or three people to think about how code's going to fit together before they go off and write things separately. Not that you're doing it recklessly. Not that you're being aloof. It's just, hey, yeah, I wrote this library. I hope, I, I think this will help you. And then you realize, oh, man, I didn't. I didn't think at all about how you're going to use this because we didn't sit down earlier together. And I know mm -hmm. hard to come up with the examples. They feel contrived, but I bet we all feel like we've been there. Yeah, I think we definitely can say that we've been in those spots. And, you know, I mean, there's certainly places where even though we didn't go down the pair, pair programming path, it would have in hindsight been a good uh, a good tool if we had it available to us. So um, what are your tips for if if this isn't if you're watching and you're saying this isn't happening at work and I, this might be a little hard because we don't know everyone's scenario. Um, do you have any tips for how you might introduce it to your team, overcome some of the fear you might personally have or maybe the fear that your boss might think it's a waste of time or that wow, it's taking, quote unquote, twice as long to do the work. Any mm. any tips or thoughts about though? Do you want to debunk some of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, there's a lot there, right? There's a lot of good little little topics that, you, that you're I Sure, I was you know, unfair about that. that <laughs> so, no, no, I, I, I think a good place to start with, you know, or, or a good thing to talk about is like, you know, how to get started or how to, how to do that, right? Uh, by the way, um, so... Um, so the first tip I have is, you know, do this in bite size amounts, right? I think that that by far is the biggest thing that people realize when they say, well, I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm worried that this is just like, I, how am I, oh my gosh, it, you know, whole day or whatever. It's just, it's all, it's scary, right? So think about it as in small amounts. Let's try this for an hour or two, right? And, and then let's, and, and, you know, that's the first one is try it in small ways. Now, I think it's interesting. You mentioned one of the things about, you know, people saying, well, maybe it's going to take longer to, to, to build. Um, a lot of people say, eh, there's no, I don't have any statistics on this, but you know, one of the things I've heard is, well, it doesn't take longer because the code is better. And in the long run, you know, you have less bugs and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, you save time by pair programming. I'm, I'm not gonna go that far as to say you save time for pair programming. I mean, I'd like to think in the long run, you know, there's other benefits that, that way into it. I could list other benefits, we, you know, we could go on to that, but let's think about starting off with small amounts. Let's think about starting off with a developer that maybe you have a good relationship with, right? You don't have to go and look for you know, or, or someone that you, let's use the word, but maybe better than a good relationship. Let's say, start off with a developer that you trust, right? That you say, you know, we're probably in a similar 
you know, we've had good conversations in the past, right? We work together pretty well. This person's not going to beat me up, you know, because my imposter syndrome is going crazy right now. I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, they're going to find out that I don't know what I'm doing, right? They're going to yep. find out Today's that I day. Google a lot of this stuff. Yeah, they're going to find out that I Google a lot of stuff because I don't know this stuff off the top of my head all the time, right? And what you're going to find out is neither do they, okay? <laughs> um, so start off with small amounts uh, with, with an ally or so, you know, we can use that term, an ally, someone we trust to work with. Another thing that uh, I've heard some teams do, I'm not a huge fan of this uh, in like the long run, but it, probably good as a getting started approach is to talk about it. Uh, and this is where managers can help out or team leads that want to encourage this is in the sprint planning process. If you're following like an agile methodology and you're doing sprints or something like that, uh, some people will even say, hey, we've been talking about pair programming that one user story, uh, you know, story one, two, three, four, five. Why don't when we're getting ready to do that, let's let's pair up for a couple of hours on that particular story. Um, it might be interesting for one reason or another that particular story, um, or or at least it's something that you can sort of like plan it out, and then you, that way you can say like, okay, yeah, I'm probably going to be doing that on Thursday. You know, when's a good time? Like, but it, it sort of gives you something to focus on as opposed to like, I don't know when we should pair for one, you know, cause some people just do it as like, Hey, stop by my desk. We'll pair up if we're working on something, you know, it could be more casual, but this idea of, and I think this gives a manager or a team leader, you know, whatever the role is an opportunity to sort of like help encourage it. Hey, on that task, you know, guys, we've been talking about pairing up. Why don't the two of you, why don't you take a shot on that story? Right. Um, so that there's a, you know, there's a couple of tips sort of like for getting started. Um, the rest of it, well, I think another tip is for getting started is to have this conversation that we're having together as a team, sort of, I wouldn't, you could call it setting ground rules, but maybe not ground rules as much as like setting expectations, right? Let's understand Let's remind each other or, you know, a leader can remind the team, hey, let's, let's check our egos. Let's be careful here. Let's be inclusive. Let's ask questions. Let's not be bossy. Let's be flexible and things like that. You know, I mean, it's really good to kind of re remind ourselves of that. Right. And what you're going to hear normally in these conversations with a team that is new to pair programming is that. You know, I'm just picturing like one of our teams and maybe there's like four or five developers in the room and, you know, a manager or something like that. Or, you know, and w once you start sort of talking about this, you realize that, you know what, I'm worried about pairing up with Rich because of a lot of these reasons. And I go, I hear Rich asking the same questions. OK, he's kind of worried about it, too. Like we're coming at this from the same place. Neither of us want to offend the other person. You know, we're both a little unsure. And we can discuss these things. And once we've had that open conversation, that sort of sets the tone for that the pair programming session, I think, where, you know, we kind of know, OK, one of us is going to drive for a little bit. Maybe we'll switch after a half hour. Maybe the other person will drive for a little bit, you know, like these kind of things. Um, and, um, you know, like that. Those, those are some tips for getting started. Yeah, I like what you said about like instead of just saying, "Hey, we should start pairing." Have this exact conversation. <laughs> what do you think the benefits will be, right? So that that way there's an expectation instead of this mystery of, "Well, I don't know. I guess we'll code together for a while. See, it didn't do anything." You know? Yeah, talk about talk about the negative things, those things you expect. So, like Chris, me, and you are going to pair up. Let's talk about the things we don't think is going to work well. So that maybe we'll come after it and go, you know, that thing we thought was going to be a problem wasn't so bad. Or or what do we do if we bump into this particular situation? You know, and guess what? One of them is let's take a break. Right. Like, you know, things are getting a little testy or we feel like we're getting I'm looking over at you and we're working together. But you're getting that look in your eye. I know that look. You need a break. You need a Snickers bar 
or, you know, let's stretch our legs. Cause let's face it. When I work, I don't just sit at the keyboard for hours, right? I'll get up and walk around for a bit hit the bathroom, you know, whatever the situation is, right? Like those things come up. Right. And, and so, you know, talk about taking breaks and, you know, doing all those things and, and just, you know, try it out and, and see how it goes is the, is like the best tip. Um, everybody listening you know, I, a big bump there on the mic. That was an accident. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think uh, the biggest problem comes up. And this is the hardest one for me personally. Like I'm, I'm like type A, whatever. I'm like a driver. I like to, I kind of like to do things my way if I'm, you know, being honest, right? It's really hard to say, oh, God, all right, Chris wants to, Chris wants to put that line of code like that. I mean, that is not the way I would write it. And you have to commit, commit yourself to going in and saying, I'm going to let the other person win some of these things, right? Because what, what it really comes down to is half the time, you know, we could write that line of code six different ways and all six of them are going to work just as well. Chris really wanted to call it a var and I really wanted to put the word string there. Does it really matter? Right now we have standards in our organization, you know, whatever we can fall back on all that, but to use that as an example, like, does it really matter now? Some things do matter. I might want to use double equals. And Chris said, well, what if we use dot you know, equals? And he explains to me why there's a reason that for some reason, using that word equals, I don't know, again, a you know, contrived example, right? right? You know, Chris, uh, on the top of my head that I come up with here. But maybe there is a reason. And I go, oh, you know, OK, that's interesting. There is a that's oh I'm on I'm on board with that or okay I'll give that a try let's see how that plays out a little later but you got to be able to like not nitpick on every line of code yeah. you know I was going to ask it's, you about that a little later if it didn't come up was uh cuz you you even said it there's a difference between going so far off the board that this code's going to look so different from the rest of what your team produces, especially in a language like C sharp, where we've definitely come to a place where we could have three C sharp programs. And, and you might question to me if you, if you, if you landed from another, another platform, another environment, you might ask me if they were three different programming languages. Uh, I think that's where we're getting to with that language, which I'm not criticizing. I'm just, it's just reporting. Right. Um, the difference between that and just naming that, naming that, uh, that field, naming that, yeah. how, how you, how you, uh, decide to exit this method, little things. Yeah. That I actually those are, think that's those a are generally good experiences. I think, you know, to, uh, to get a different perspective and see, you know, a different way to do things, whether, whether you end up agreeing with it or disagreeing with it, um, you know, that's, a that's, yeah. it gets complicated and there's definitely some complications, right? Um, I tell you what, I've done it as a, with a team, uh, recently I've done a couple of experience, uh, experiences with team or mob pair programming or mob programming, <laughs> um, where, um, where we did a architecture workshop and, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of the story here, right? And, and it's actually, it's a, it's a good story, I think, because it, it I learned a lot from this experience, which is that we've been doing these architecture workshops where we would discuss um, certain best practices, certain standards that the team agrees upon, certain design choices that we want to make as a general rule across applications, across teams. Sort of, you know, think about a reference architecture that we're going to want to follow and things like that. And I did... I did a couple of these and got some mixed results. Um, you know, everybody liked it, but what I would find is that people would go off and there was a disconnect between what they heard and what they did, you know? And I said, well, why don't, maybe what we should do after the next one of these things is we'll do, we'll build an application as a team. Something simple. I had a little framework of something that we we're going to build and we're going to follow these sort of standards and we're going to do a pair programming exercise or a mob programming exercise. And, it was a really great learning experience to hear 
a bunch of people on a team talk about, you know, sort of reflecting back on what we talked about earlier in the workshop and uh, how to implement things. And what was interesting about it, actually, as a as a pair programming experience as well, is that all of them were coming into the experience new at the same thing, which was they're all experienced developers, but they're all new with this particular pattern. Right. And so there was somewhat of a level playing field there. Right. And I'm just thinking about that now for the first time, that maybe that's one of the reasons why it was a good experience, because they all were sort of level. They could all understand why one of one another would potentially do something, quote, wrong, you know, whatever that wrong is, but maybe not following the pattern. Right. Um, and and they came off. And so that we they learned a lot. Right. It was a great refresher, by the way. So I'm, I'm bringing this up for a couple of reasons, because, by the way, it was a great way to end up the, uh, the architecture workshop as opposed to just like talking to go in and do something. Right. But it was also a great way to introduce pair programming because it was new to the team. They had never done it before. And I wanted that as part of our, you know, best practices and standards that were in the workshop is we want to introduce pair programming. So what a great way to do that. Let's all pair together. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and let's, and we're level because we're all learning this thing for the same time. Right. Which actually brings up another tip. I'm going a little long here. I want to give you guys a chance to jump in on this. But another tip is that it doesn't have, remember, we said it could be mob, it could be two people, it could be whatever. So how about someone that has experience in pair programming, either pairing with someone who doesn't, because that person can be the sort of the mentor, the reminder to say, well, I've got a little more experience. I'm going to let, I'm going to remember to let you speak up or I'm going to, you know, let you do things or have a sort of moderator, have somebody like, you know, in this case myself, I was the moderator of this mob program thing, right? Like I just let them go and I said, I'm going to be quiet. And believe it or not, there were times when I was pretty quiet. I was pretty good about that. It's hard. <laughs> but there were other times where I go, okay, guys, you know what? So-and-so has been doing a lot of the talking and I think I like everything they're saying. But I'm not hearing as much from so and so, and I want to hear from them. And everybody, let's make sure that that person gets a chance to speak, right? And I was the moderator, the mentor, wh whatever you want to call it. And I think that can be a good tip as well, right? Maybe, may, maybe a good tip then to say is, you know, two people who've never done pair programming without a little bit mentoring, you know, is a recipe for trouble potentially right and maybe that's why people don't like it because they're like oh god two of us got together and it was terrible you know kind of like when you hear people say well that agile stuff stinks and you, know, you go well did you did you have a daily scrum nah no we heard that that wasn't that important we didn't do that how was your retrospective well we didn't do the retrospective you know so you could say the same thing about pair programming you know oh it didn't work out great did you take breaks no we went for like six straight hours Okay. Did you take turns? No. I mean, I was doing all the typing. Well, no wonder it didn't work out so great, right? You have to, you know, you have to take on these these tips and you have to, you know, you have to, so maybe it helps to have someone with some experience in it, you know, as part of it, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, certainly sharing the experience you got here, I, um, certainly helps give us an understanding perspective of what it's like to, to actually try and implement that in your in your organization was pretty good too. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there's horror stories. I'm sure people have like, and, and if anyone does feel free to, you know, throw them in there. I'm sure there's examples where this has gone badly uh, and we could all learn from those, from those experiences, you know, but, um, but my experiences with them have generally been pretty good. And I've been nervous going into these situations. You know, I've been nervous. Uh, here, here's a scenario. Let's talk about this as another scenario. Talk about one that would probably make people nervous, right? And I, I don't mean to sound egotistical uh, that I'm some great developer because I'm not. But I have a title at work, you know what I mean? And, like, I know that that title brings with it some, um, you know, like, like we we've, when we talk about things, when I talk about with developers, I've said to the other managers, I say, hey, you know, like my title is AVP, right? Uh, and and I said, you know, when 
to, to, I want the developers to feel open in talking with me, you know, and the, and some of them have said, listen, for some of the, you know, especially the newer ones that didn't know you back when you were just a developer, you know, it is a little intimidating when AVP walks into the room, you know, and I, I, I try to fight that, right? So one of the things I've been doing also to get to know the teams uh, and get to know more of the developers is to do more pair programming with just like, I'll randomly say to someone, hey, I'd like to pair up with you for an hour. Can we write some code together? Right now, that might be really intimidating for them. And my goal for that is to is while it might be on day one, you know, or the first time or whatever going into this, my hope is that they come off it without that and go, hey, you know what? Andy's a good resource that I, I should talk to more for some of these things, right? Um, and and I also think it's a really great way. Uh, let's be honest. There's a there's a bit of evaluation happening during that process, right? Pair programming is not necessarily meant to be an evaluation process, right? But I think if I'm jumping in and asking someone to do pair, like they're probably feeling a little evaluated. Um, but it's but the flip side is that it's a great way for me or any leader or any manager or whatever you are to get a feel for the for the skills of the team. Right. Um, and it's important in that scenario, I think, to make people feel pretty comfortable. And uh, believe me, I think if I was doing one, you know, they would realize how rusty I am. <laughs> so um, I I'm, 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 don't get to write a lot of code these days. Um, but I think it's a good tool, I guess, for managers as well. And I don't know if you guys have had that experience or if anyone else has done those kind of experience uh, experiments. I have not, no. That's a good point, though. Like, I hadn't thought yeah. about... I've thought about the idea of feeling... <clears throat> feeling, like, kind of exposed or or that the person sitting with you is is judging you, no matter what they where they are on the org chart, even if they're a peer... I hadn't thought yes. about your point of view of of you you want to take this take this chance to honestly mentor and assess but also contribute even if you're not actually going to have your fingers on the keyboard you're you're kind of contributing to the code a little bit but you have this problem they know you're the boss <laughs> that's tough yeah it's hard to get it's around. tough you know one of the things I would try to remind them is I probably don't know the problem domain as well as they do. And that's part of what I'm hoping to learn from this a little bit more about that particular piece of software, see how it works. Um, maybe that particular product. I, I don't want to get into specifics of yeah, all the different types sure. of software we write, but we write different pieces of software. I'm not familiar with all of them and I'm not familiar with all the problems that they each solve. Right. So I'm learning something from them no matter what, right. About the problem domain or, um, again, there's a style, there's something they know that I don't know. I know for a fact that there are things that could be as junior as walking in the door on day one. There's things they know that I don't know, right? That, that's a, a promise, right? And that's, I think that's always the case. And that's one of the great benefits. Now, you know, Rich, I was wondering about your experience. Uh, I don't think I'm going to, uh, you know, we, we did talk like very briefly about some of like our experiences coming into this and rich i think you come to it from a different perspective which is that you all work with customers right yeah yeah and i, I yeah, think that's a probably a little different it is um it's probably a little more it's, it's probably a little similar to what you were just talking about from the manager perspective and walking in not that you know we're overseeing you know, over the customers are working together but the idea is that the pair side of it is really their hands on the keyboards we're making sure that, you know, we're, we're making sure they're not going to get blocked or if they get blocked, how do we unblock them? Because when we do mm -hmm. those kind of sessions with customers, it's more, this is new technology for them. This is, you know, something they've not had a chance to, to build or experience with. And it's to, a chance for us to almost be that booster rocket to get them up to that next level as quickly as we can. So, uh, and because, you know, I'm, we're not allowed to, to, you know, in the role I'm in, we don't write code that goes into production, basically. Uh, you know, so there's a there are people in other parts of the organization who can, but in, in our role we can't. So the, the best we can do is just is be that uh, uh, be that um, mentor, if you will, or that that yeah, navigator, sure. and getting them past the, the the things they need to to get the work done. 
Right. Yeah, so you're not actually allowed to be the driver. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So like, you as know, much as I want to take the keyboard and, and drive sometimes, you know, it's <laughs> but like with a really contrived example, you know, they're using some technology or some product that they have no familiarity with. And instead of them sitting again. there, yeah. well, okay, sure. It could be. And instead of them sitting there and trying to struggle through a getting started or a, a tutorial type thing, you're saying, all right, all right. The first thing you got to do is, you know, you instantiate one of these and there's a method that you kind of build things up with. And they're like, oh, great. And so you're kind of, I mean, you're not going to be able to at least maybe getting them through these first couple, then you're hoping that they can springboard. Is that sort of it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, you know, when I pitch it, it's, it's like, yes, you add the documentation's out there. You can absolutely get up to speed in doing this, but this is meant to be a quicker roadmap to do that because we've kind of done this a few times. So we know where the landmines are. We know where the pitfalls could be. So let's, let's yeah. kind of make sure we walk you around them. Yeah, but but that's a good um, that's a good technique for pair programming, like internally as well. Like you know, uh, so uh, imagine a scenario where you know, Rich, you and I work together, and we're gonna pair up on something, and it's something you just know way better than I do, right? Um, which is probably most things. That's what I was gonna <laughs> but, say. Just the opposite. This, Go ahead. <laughs> but, but in this case, right, what ends up often a mistake you could make in pair programming. I think it would be a mistake, right? Maybe not always. But the mistake would be, hey, Rich, you know this stuff pretty good. You know that HTTP client inside and out, or you're the entity framework whiz or whatever. Why don't you take over and drive on this section, right? And I would say that's a, potentially a mistake, right? Why don't we take that model that you're talking about, Rich, where, like you would do for customer? You say, let me drive, but let let me try to work it out, but you're here to advise me. Like, don't, don't be like, Oh, this will go much faster. Cause I know this, let me drive this part. I say, do the opposite, right? Yeah. Let me type it. Even if you're going to tell me exactly what to type, you know, there's that memory where like you're typing it you're, and you're going to remember it differently if you're the ones uh, on the keyboard and things like that. So I think that it's a really good model for prayer programming, which is a reminder that it's that other person's going to learn more. Like Rich, if you went and wrote that code for them, right? If you were able to write uh, production code and you went and wrote that, they wouldn't learn it quite the same, even though they were sitting there with you, as yes. them typing it in, hitting dot, and looking at that list of methods or you know whatever that experience is, right? And working through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, even though you know, probably in that scenario. You wouldn't hit something that would fail, but it's it's the the going through that process at the very least. You're 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 gonna kind of remember, or, you know, it's like taking notes, right? You know, if you yes, if you write them down, you know, they're gonna be retained a little better than if you just sat there and listened to the talk. Yeah, I, it's it's a it's a great device or whatever they call that, like like a learning device, you know, taking those notes and stuff like that. So. Um, does this, you know, does so the, Chris, does this seem to, you know, sort of jive up with what, what you thought of a pair program? I think you said you had somewhat less experience with it. I, I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I think you had less experience with pair programming coming into this. Um, is there, is there a things that you sort of think of it differently now, or is this kind of what you thought it was, or I'm just, you know. So I think, um, when I made that statement, it was partially to say that uh, from the extreme programming point of view, which just so happens to be one of the first introductions I had to pair programming. So we're talking a while ago because I, I have to admit, they read the, I read the book a long time ago. Um, as a matter of daily practice, I haven't yet uh, been part of a team that practices that. Now, I think... I've tended to see or be part of teams where it's a little bit more of the of troubleshooting and not even so much of the hey that looks that looks like something we should we should start working on together. Um usually it's a work in progress type situation of hey come come take a look at this and and it can go in many directions. Sometimes it can be more than two people. Like you can, like you said, it could be that that even the whole team, whether that team is maybe two, four, whatever, all kind of gets together. Um, 
or you might sit with someone you might consider the expert on a specific topic or a pivot um like uh and, and one of the things that came out when i was doing a little research is and i'd forgotten this i'd forgotten this is that people have different styles um some of them even give them names like ping pong or driving school which these all have different different names like in driving school uh which sometimes is also called like the strong style where like the navigator gives directions but the but the driver carries them out but then um so wait so to, just to clarify that a bit so what you're saying there and and i, I yeah. i'm familiar with i kind of like this sometimes you say the person who's driving or, or typing yeah. isn't actually making the decisions right the navigator is actually or in this case what you call the driving instructor uh is actually saying okay here's what i want you to type right it's sort of a flip it's an interesting way of doing it um and it kind of i think in some ways that levels the playing field um because the because the driver's always going to get like some of their thoughts in there anyway you know what i mean right yeah <laughs> they can do whatever they want to do but that so yeah that's that's the driving instructor driving school yeah i'm going to switch real quick just to show I, i'm not i didn't bring this up as authoritative however it's it's our friends at at ibm and hey I would expect IBM to take a scientific approach to this stuff. And, oh, and you know, I, I've friends. seen I've seen these kinds of methodology documentation sections on lots of lots of different places. But this is one thing that came up. And what I found interesting is they named off pairing styles. So I talked about driving school <clears throat> where the navigator creates and creates an instruction like, well, hey, let's let's create a new method. Hey, let's open a file. Right. Um, and then they kind of talk in the opposite direction about tour guide and they, but they even go on to say in tour guide, they go on to say, look, this is probably better when one person has significantly more, uh, expertise. And I'll give you an example just because, um, I've had the unfortunate luck of, of, of running into the situation of fighting SSL slash TLS many, many times, including in .NET code and, and, and what to make of those mysterious S channel and TLS errors that say the TLS session could not be established and everybody just throws their hands up and says I don't know well I fought those battles and I have the the campaign ribbons and the scars and so I would say that if you said to me Andy like we've got a problem in our code we were getting this exception could not establish TLS connection we don't know what's wrong I'd say well Andy Let's go. Let's dive in. Let me show you what we should add to your code to help you figure out what's. So I feel like I would be more like a tour guide at the beginning. But they even say here in this paragraph, not an ideal long term arrangement. This is short term, a chance for you to close that skills gap, which I would love. I mean, heck, I don't. I, I know this is going to sound crazy and maybe not the That's topic. Cool. Of, yeah, maybe not the topic of, we're on tonight, but could be a whole nother show. I don't want to be the expert on anything in organization. And I mean that from the standpoint in that I want it out of here so that we're all capable <laughs> because then it's good for all of us. It's good for the org. It's good for, for my team. It's good for my manager. And it's great for not necessarily being the only one who's awakened at 3 a.m. All of those things are bonuses or called out of your vacation. Like all of those things are wonderful reasons. The ping pong idea here is uh, like they talk and, and I don't want to say this is the only time I've seen these terms used and not even used the same way. How they talk. Yeah, about I don't like, think hey, these are um, these are IBM uh, original ideas, no. but they did a nice job of documenting yeah. them here. Right. But even in this other blog post, the definitions are slightly they were slightly different, which isn't to say they're bad. Wasn't to say they're bad. But like in this one, partner one ping pong pairing wrote a failing test and then Pass the keyboard. Partner two made the test pass. Wrote the next failing test. Pass the keyboard. Do you have to mix ping pong pairing with TDD? I don't think so. It could just no. be like I'll write this method. Okay, Andy, you go. Um, but but it was interesting to me to see that that folks had begun to try to academically describe some of these tips. I, I, I didn't want to necessarily get bogged down in them. I think these are wonderful resources. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to get them into the comments on the YouTube replay. Um, just because I thought these were cool, you know. And, and I'm not trying to say that IBM's... I, I bet you we could go find some stuff on, on Microsoft's side and probably uh, Oracle's when they talk about 
their stuff. I mean, nodes, whoever, whatever environment you're in, doesn't matter. Uh, I bet, I bet we can find this kind of guidance. Um, mm. So I, I guess I, I, it's me. You've made me think a lot about like where, what might be uh, that there's actually more of a spectrum to this and how might it be interesting to push the envelope a little bit and maybe at the beginning of what you your team might call a user story is instead of doing like half the story and then getting a pairing session going, maybe I should see if someone's interested in starting it from the beginning. But I want to say, I'll tell you what stops me. That story, and, and maybe this is a problem, the story's got my name on it and it's got my little picture there. In the in the So if I start asking for help right away, am I pulling my weight? Like, do you see how that like psychologically comes in? Like, well, maybe I should do a little yeah. bit first. If I do a little bit right. first and then I say, Andy, I need help, you know, I, I'm not trying to, uh, di- see, I'm I just think, thinking, how do we get through this? Yeah. Yeah. I think that you're, you know, you're, you're bringing up sort of, you know, roadblocks to getting this accomplished. Right. And this is where I think it's important for managers and things like, you know, or leaders to emphasize this kind of stuff. Right. Is Chris, it is not a reflection on you that you're you're not asking for help you're saying let's collaborate let's do it together like you got to change that mindset a little bit i know you made that up as an example here right but but what i would say to people is like change your mindset yeah you're not asking for help maybe i'm asking to help you right maybe you could say hey i'm going to build this thing i'd like to not be the only one who understands it so i'm going to help other people by pairing or whatever but it's a mindset it's 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 changing a, a perspective or a mindset but hopefully a manager or a team lead or whoever, you know, is encouraging these practices, right? And then that, then you should never have to feel that way. But I can understand why you would, right? Um, you know, the other thing is, you know, you, I want to start this story and, you know, Chris, you're busy and I, I want to pair a program with you, but you're doing something. You, you got your own stories to, to knock off the board, right? And so I don't want to burden you. I guess I'll just maybe next sprint won't be as busy and we could pair program next sprint because I don't really want to bother Chris. He's pretty busy, like that kind of thing, right? There's so many of these things that, you know, can come up. Right. And, um, it's just, you got to try to like sort of get past those things. If it's something that, you know, you're not really eager to try. I will say that most people, again, I, I want to end on a positive note. Most people have, have, come away from this pretty positive about it. I mean, people don't say, Oh, I want to do it every week, but people are generally like, you know, that was, that was, there was a fun aspect of it, a social aspect of it as well, which, you know, which can be fun. I am. Anyway, we've talked about mob programming quite a bit and this particular talk, I'll try and get again, get this particular link. Um, I've seen Woody give this talk well before, this NDC London talk. I think I might have seen him give it even as much as 10 years ago when it was still a little formative. Um, he's espoused this for a long time and I recognized him immediately. I even said like, yep, mobprogramming.org, look at this. And, you know, he's, he talks a lot about how it works, but I guess this is probably it. Everyone on the team working on the same thing at the same time in the same space on the same computer, which I think the first time you hear it makes you kind of raise an eyebrow. But he shows lots of pictures yeah. of the team working. Um, they don't look miserable. No. And, you know, there's a lot of folks there. Um, I think yeah. in some other pictures he shows how, like, the team's board might be right there nearby. Uh, like, yeah, the work board is right there. And I'm sure that that some of the uh, – I'm going to pick on management or, or the business because they're not here to defend themselves – the objection would be, wow, now I'm paying four, five, six, seven people to do the work of one. But I, I think Woody's argument is, is, and you can watch this for yourself, is some of the things that Fred Brooks said in his quote is you're far more likely to write each of this little bits of code once. Maybe you're not 100% guaranteed, but the, the chances going way up. Uh, the chances that you at least collaborate on what the design of this thing is going to be go way up because you you all got together. Like, by definition, you collaborated on the design. 
<laughs> it couldn't even be like you and I just standing at a whiteboard and saying, hey, you get me a library with some interface and then I will go implement that. And then you come back later and I go, oh, I didn't think that's what you were going to do. I mean, by definition, there's no other way to get around this. You wrote the code together. So you mentioned the session, and this is what yeah. I want to get back to, is you mentioned a session that you had. I, I was wondering if you wanted to, if you could just explain a little more about what you thought it might have, it might have, was it something that you wanted to introduce to a larger group? And so you said, let's do one together. I, I don't know how much you can really go into it, and that's fair. Well, I mean, nothing like secretive about it, it you know, just from a time perspective, right? But, yeah, right. Uh, um, yeah, so in this case, again, I, it was a sample application. This was not production code that we were writing in this particular thing. It was to watch and see how they would learn uh, certain ways to implement and follow like an, um, reference architecture and certain best practices and standards that were being introduced. And so there was a sample application to build uh, that was sort of geared towards pictures um, because in the case where I did this, and I think I did it twice this past year uh, with a bigger, larger group in that similar scenario, we were all remote because of COVID, right? Or because of working from home or whatever. Um, and I'll tell you what, uh, that levels the playing field nicely in pair programming. Um, it's not like, oh, God, uh, I'm sitting at your desk, Chris, and I don't like the keyboard you have. I'm used to my own keyboard. You know, hey, we're both there on our own machines. Um, we're both, you know, like I, I we're both in our own environment. I, I it actually worked out really well. Of course, we we're using like teams and we were talking and we were sharing screens or I forget how we did it. You know, there's tooling. We could have a whole other conversation about oh, yeah. tooling. <laughs> but um, but. So it was kind of different than that that experience of those photos that you just showed of like a bunch of people sitting in a room. Yep. Um, now, you got to be careful with that scenario of a bunch of people sitting in a room. Um, I've been involved in it reminds me a little bit of mob code reviews that I've been a part of where it can get pretty easy for a group of people to start to gang up on somebody who has a difference of opinion and stuff like that. And, and that can, that can go, that can be tricky as well. Right. So, um, again, I think that that might be something maybe best saved with, with a team that has a certain level of experience or, or at least, a. you wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to see that develop into like, a, a people ganging up, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I just anyway. thought I'd mention him because, so, uh, uh yeah, he's he's been promoting mob programming for as long as I can remember. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd like to watch that because I'd like to know how far they take it. Um, do they take it to the all day every day uh, scenario, or is it like we're going to mob program for like two hours on Wednesday, and we're all going to go off on our way? Um, I, I'd be curious to hear that aspect of it. Yeah. I think that uh, I think that what surprises people when he gives this talk is, again, he says <clears throat> he, there was a slide, right? The whole team works on the same thing at the same time in the same space on the same computer. It is a whole team approach to doing all the work the team does, including designing, coding, testing and working with the customers, users yeah. and other stakeholders. And yeah, that's the first part where you go, oh, there's no way. Forget it. That's fantasy land. And I'm not here to defend her. I'm just saying it's an interesting approach that I remember seeing a long time ago. I wanted to make sure I found a video, something you can check out. Um, yeah. I hear, no, I hear you. I, I, I'd like to check it out myself because I'm not as familiar with it on a formal basis, you know? So, uh, anyway, do we have anything lined up for next week or are we just going to, uh, are we just going to, you know, we we've, we have plenty of shows where we don't know what we're going to do until the day before. Uh, yeah, like what's we, the topic? Two right? days before. But, um, or, or I'm just wondering, do we have something to announce? Or I don't know if we, I don't think we do, right? I don't specifically, no. But we yeah. have a big list of topics to go through. <laughs> and we have There's a big archive. That's true. Right? We have a big archive yep. on YouTube. Yep. Of all the shows we've been doing. Um and, and we've got a, a nice 
collection of, of different topics there for people to go back and watch and and give us thumbs up and leave comments on them if you want and 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 participate uh, it's a quiet night in the chat tonight more quiet than usual i hope it was a good topic for people you know i don't know you know I, when it, the chat's quiet um makes me a little nervous sometimes if i'm being honest here but um i don't know i, I thought it was a good topic <laughs> Well, the interesting thing is that you kind of discover very quickly that, um, like, I think it would be easy for us to get together and say, so, hey, do you do some pair programming at work? And all three of us could nod. And even the the person watching the show, right, you might be nodding. And then what I hope that what we did at least is say, you know, there's 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 some nuance to it. When, how long, at what point in the task, at what point in the project? Uh, who do you pair up? Um, you talked a lot about, t- and I, I think this is important. You talked a lot about taking breaks. Don't just uh, stare at each other the whole time. Um, we talked, like, you know, flipping control back and forth. And and I think the key is, is you got to fit it not just to you and, and your team, but even what you're working on, which is something I didn't think about until I read those different types because uh, I would have just naturally landed on like, yeah, you know, you got somebody typing and then somebody navigating and, and maybe you pick who says what to do next or you just talk about it as you're working. But that whole tour guide style got me thinking about, yeah, I could see a scenario where either myself or someone else is more of the expert. I'm not going to say that, that they just happen to have done it before or something. So you so you let them sort of lead out. But it's kind of like the person who's been down the trail before. So you let them lead out, but it's like, no, I want you to come with me because I want you to know this trail as well as I do. And it's a great opportunity to, to, to get some mentorship in, some education in, right as part of your everyday workload. Um, education about software in general, education about your software and how it works. Uh Maybe even an opportunity to, I don't want to say enforce, because that's not the word I'm looking for, but to keep to team standards only because you're, yeah, you're, less, in, yeah. you're less inclined yeah, to, to do it quick. For and some just, of that as well. You're, well, you're less yeah. inclined to just kind of do it and get it done and then know everybody closes their eyes. It's like, well, hold on a second. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. Did we log this? Did we get this in the, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right, right. things to do. No, I think that's exactly right. You have another person reminding you to follow some of those things. Would we would we catch it in a code review? Hopefully. Right, right. Right? But that's all that could be another day later or something like that, right? Like you wanna you wanna catch things early, right? Or shift left, all that all that kind of stuff, right? And so you're you're kind of shifting left some of those catches, some of those, you know, checks and balances. Um if I'm using that, I think I'm using that analogy correctly, that shift left, right? Yeah. How to yeah. shift you left. You want to get it closer to the time point where you've written the code. Otherwise, you've got to get back in that headspace of where it was of how you created it to figure out how to solve the issue. How to shift left. Yeah. Like, that's a whole Because it's more than one thing. How to shift left. It's more than yeah. one thing. It's not just, it's, it's part of, you know, part of it is trying to, to get the code out correctly so that you don't, but it's more that test early, right? Automate early. That's such an interesting topic. That's like that's like a, not in the show. That's a that's a <laughs> that's a what? Shift left is a mindset. I mean, eventually it's a mindset, you can't yeah. shift everything left, right? You got to hit a wall somewhere. Like how do you keep shifting? <laughs> Everybody says shift DevOps left, shift testing left. You know, like shift everything to the left. Like what? <laughs> day one's a busy day. <laughs> Maybe that's a topic for next week. Yeah, that's interesting. There you go. All right. Anyway. Hey, don't so, forget to catch us on YouTube, uh, take, uh, you know, if you're watching live. And don't forget to watch us live if you're catching us on YouTube. Is that a good? Is that pretty good? <laughs> endless loop? That is That's good. Like something I like of an that. endless loop, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My head might explode. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> are, are, so, uh, are we live or not? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Um, but I'm glad we I'm glad we did this tonight. You know, we did take a few weeks off, and that's going to happen from time to time on the show. Um, one of the benefits of the three of us is that 
we have some flexibility. Coincidentally, it was a lot of blockages over the past month or so. Yeah. But, um, but you know, I think we come back stronger when we take a break, you know, like it's, we do it for the audience. We take those (laughs) breaks because we want to come back renewed, rejuvenated with the extra energy, uh, to, uh, to deliver the the quality content that viewers deserve. You can't get this just anywhere. That's for sure. (laughs) Although it's probably a lot of places you can get it, right? But you can't get exactly this (laughs) just anywhere. You can't get the three of us anywhere. I'm not trying to say anything more than that. (laughs) Hopefully everybody had a good time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Rich, you want to uh, do the honors, Rich? Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, well, I, I think we, yeah. So thanks everyone for watching uh, and participating. It was uh, great to have you all here. If you are uh, watching this in the future, certainly feel, uh, click the like button, subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever we post up on uh, on YouTube uh, as well as on, on Twitch uh, whenever we go live there too. So with that, uh, for Chris, for Andy, uh, saying good night and we'll see you here next week on the Dev Talk Show.